The war is coming as the United States is preparing for imminent attacks on U.S. soil by Iran. Now, this is a clear and urgent warning, and we've got government officials ringing the alarm on Iran, Yemen, and other terrorist groups that may try and cause chaos within our country. Now, I've shown you guys in previous videos about the possibility that bad actors may have already made their way into our country, and today, we're going to be discussing how the government is preparing for these attacks, attacks that may come through the internet. The United States economy is the most sophisticated and technology reliant on earth probably and and that makes us very vulnerable to adversaries who are seeking to disrupt us adversaries like china north korea russia and of course iran as the iran nuclear agreement quickly unravels security experts say they've seen an uptick in iranian cyber attacks specifically targeting the united states and the questions that experts are asking are, what new tactics do hackers have up their sleeves? Will they use more ransomware to hold data hostage? Or cyber spying and espionage to access secret information? And more importantly, is the US actually prepared to defend itself? Because the more technologically reliant the United States becomes, the more vulnerable it is to disruption. Just look at the top two industries that experts say suffer the most significant cyber attacks. It's finance and high tech. What's so interesting about cyber is it's a very accessible capability, and we're seeing Iran is one of those one of those countries that is actually using uh, third parties in country, probably contractors to develop their own capabilities. You wanna know the worst part about this report from the Wall Street Journal? It came out like three years ago. Now it looks like they're still not ready as Iran may already be watching our online infrastructure as we speak. I mean like, why else would they warn us about this again? Now before I even get to the footage, I wanna ask you guys, do you think that it's possible that Iran will conduct their attacks right here on US soil? Just comment a quick yes or no on that one in the comment section down below. And as always guys, smash the like button, get this message out to everyone that you know by sharing this video subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications so that you can stay updated on everything that's happening right here in our country. I appreciate the help, folks. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence Intelligence 2023 Annual Threat Assessment states that Iran remains a major cyber threat. Iran's growing expertise and willingness to conduct aggressive cyber operations make it, make it a major threat to the security of the U.S. and allied networks and data. Iran's opportunistic approach to cyber attacks make critical infrastructure owners in the United States susceptible to being targeted. Ambassador, in your role as coordinator for counterterrorism, you were able to witness firsthand the capabilities of our enemies to conduct ter terror attacks on our critical infrastructure. How, in your experience, how has Iran used cyber to enable their operations? Well, Congressman, thanks for the question. I think um, Iran is a very capable adversary and you know, we spoke previously about America playing to its strengths and using the, the tools of national power available to us. That's exactly what Iran does as well. Um, it wants to operate below the threshold of open conflict with the United States because it knows that it doesn't stand a chance. Uh, Ronald Reagan sank half the Iranian Navy uh, in, in the 1980s, and they learned a lesson from that. Um, so instead of risking open conflict, they use proxies, such as Hezbollah, such as Hamas, to carry out a terrorist agenda. They use cyber intrusions um, to target critical infrastructure in the United States. Um, not the sort of thing that would trigger open conflict with the United States, but that would be an irritant and then some, and that would disable critical uh, U.S. capabilities. That's their tradecraft, um, to, to operate below the threshold. Um, uh, it's an instinct for self-preservation that is largely driving this, I think. Now, notice what he said about targeting critical infrastructure. Not enough for us to just wage war, but enough to irritate us. Hmm, now that reminds me. Remember when our power grids kept crashing in different parts of the country? Who's responsible for these attacks or attempted attacks? Groups or individual? Who's who, who are the people driving this? So I think it's... Uh the rise in extremism that is causing an attack on the power grids. We've seen this uh, across chatter on different websites. We're seeing the sharing of information and we're seeing a belief that this will uh, disable the United States and really create a society for which they want to flourish. I guess this is why a recent post shows that the United States is preparing for a potential onslaught of Iranian cyber attacks, attacks that they've confirmed will target our systems like water, electricity, and even our air traffic system. Believe me when I tell you guys, like you have to prepare for the worst case scenario. I'm talking about possibly storing food and water for the long haul because things could possibly get even worse. Not that any of us would want that, of course, 
but the language from the White House and from the FBI, it shows that the possibility of these attacks happening, they're pretty high. Now, I want to go ahead and insert something here really quickly. Imagine a scenario where the grid went out and at the same time, imagine the people who were forced to switch to electric everything. I'm talking cars, heaters, cookers, all that stuff. How are they going to get through that? There's been a major transformer leak. This is at a PG&E substation. On the night of April 16th, 2013, a mysterious incident south of San Jose marked the most serious attack on our power grid in history. PG&E tells us someone may have fired some shots into that transformer. For 20 minutes, gunmen methodically fired at high voltage transformers at the Metcalf Power substation. Security cameras captured bullets hitting the chain link fence. There was no security at all, really. They aimed at the narrow cooling fins, causing 17 of 21 large transformers to overheat and stop working. The gunman disappeared without a trace about a minute before a patrol car arrived. The substation was down for weeks, but fortunately, PG&E had enough time to reroute power and avoid disaster. If they had succeeded, what would have happened? Could have brought down all Silicon Valley. We're talking Google, Apple, all yes. these guys. Yes, that's correct. Too bad they want us to take out our gas powered generators, right? But again, I'm going on a tangent here, but let's get back to what we're talking about, all right? We are, however, getting news that they're actually monitoring the situation in Israel for threats that may affect us here on American soil. Although critics are, you know, apprehensive as to how successful these monitoring activities would actually be, since especially since we've seen multiple successful attacks within just the last few years. And that was without a war being waged. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. Why is this happening? Is there someone to blame? And will there be better days ahead once we get to 2024? And of course, the 2024 presidential elections. So President Joe Biden has been slipping when it comes to how people favor his decisions and how President Joe Biden has handled not just our economy, but relationships with other countries, which is why it's not surprising that surveys are already coming out asking the American people who can get us out of this mess. Now, granted, a leadership change doesn't necessarily mean that things are actually going to get better, but you know, it is what it is. But I guess enough people here in the country believe that the possible weakness of Biden may have led some of these big groups from being, you know, emboldened to carry out attacks. The same can't be said for how the majority of Americans feel about Trump, though. So a recent poll suggests that the Israel Hamas war would best be handled by the former president, Donald Trump. But again, you know, I trust this community more than these surveys because we got some of the sharp sharpest minds right here in our community here on YouTube. So I'm going to ask you guys, what are your thoughts on the possibility of attacks hitting our country head on? What do you think about a possible World War III scenario? And do you think that a leadership change would actually help solve all this? Make sure you guys let me know down in the comments down below. And before I go, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for liking the video and for helping spread the word. Keep safe out there and I'm going to catch you guys on the next one.